I'll never forget doing that song on stage in front of 10,000 people. That was so much fun. We were all laughing and giggling and having the best time. Today's Thursday. You've already seen me once today, and I forgot it was Thursday that I only do a show on two, at 2 o'clock. But I did two shows today. I may, may have set a precedence, and I may keep doing two shows on Thursday. Drink up, ladies. It's hot. <coughs> it's all hot. Anyway, we got some questions, and I have some answers. Now, uh, one of the things, get your water. I, I need to hold on a second. <coughs> Sorry about that. I got phlegm. It may be allergies. I may need to take an Allegra, but I don't have allergies. I refuse to have allergies. And for some reason, my bangs are looking weird. And my whole hair is looking weird now. Anyway. Folks, I have a secret for you. I didn't put on any makeup this morning, but I put on some makeup this afternoon, but I didn't put on much. I put on some lipstick, and I put some lipstick right here. That's my cheat for the day. That's how I get some makeup on me. <clears throat> so we got some questions, and let's see. We got two sheets of questions. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions. Here's the first question. Now we're in zone five and zone one this week. So we're already into zone one. And it's our living room. No, we did our living room the first part of the week. But the last three days of the this week are our front porch, our dining room, and our entrance. And I've been working hard on those three uh, three rooms. Robert's worked on our front steps. He stained them already today. And let me breathe a second. <coughs> okay, here's the first question. As, as Rush Limbaugh would do, he shakes his papers and gets everybody excited about the next thing coming up. How do I declutter a deceased family member's belongings? I want to get rid of everything. I feel so, feel guilt for doing so. I have a friend and she inherited her grandmother's house and it was filled with clutter. And she has been systematically, every day, filling her car up with stuff to take off, to take away. And if you do it a little every day, you cannot be, you cannot be the receptacle or the museum for everybody's stuff. You just can't do it. You don't have time. I'll show you the only thing I have of, that was my mother's. The only thing. I got it right here. It's a little bitty sachet thing. It's, it's made out of ceramic. And I have a rose in it that my son gave me. This is the only thing I have that belonged to my mother. It. That's it. That is it. I did not want to clutter my house up with stuff from her house. I have a couple of things from my grandmother. I have a table that was given to her by her big sister when she got married. Her big sister's husband made that for her. And I have that trestle table in my front window. And... That's, I think that's about it. Yeah. My grandmother, she collected things, but she didn't collect lots of different things. She collected platters. So when, when she passed away and when she went into assisted living, my cousin and his wife helped to declutter everything. So 
We didn't bring a bunch of stuff to our house. We just didn't do it. We brought pictures. We bought, brought things that meant something. And pictures don't take up a lot of room, especially if you take pictures of pictures. So don't allow the guilt to creep up on you because that's just evil trying to get you to keep everything and make your life chaotic. Don't do that to yourself. Do not do that to yourself. It's, what was that about Granny Pickard? Somebody said something. I, I wish I had known. Well, Granny Pickard was my great grandmother. She lived over by the cemetery, Melanie. She lived right across from the mausoleum in a little house on, on that street. And it's a little tiny house. I'll never forget it. Uh, Granny Pickard was, a, a, she taught me how to pee standing up of all things. She was a germaphobe, quite like me, probably. And uh, she took us to the fair one time and she taught me how to, I must have been about five. I don't know. It's just, <coughs> I just can't imagine teaching a five-year-old how to pee standing up. But she did. And she wore bloomers, of all things. Anyway, it's funny. Now, Granny Deanie lived on around from the cemetery, Melanie. She lived on around from the cemetery on a little street back in there by school. And you probably know where, exactly where she lived. She lived on the corner across from the school. And it just, you know, they, they were sweet, precious people that made a big difference in my life. And in my sister's lives. <clears throat> anyway. So you you got to pick and choose what you keep. Pick and choose what you keep. Because not everything is worth keeping. I have an iron skillet too from my Granny Deanie. And a griddle from my Granny Deanie. But you know what? I didn't have to have everything. I got her right here. I got her right here. And she touched my life. She molded our lives because of how she loved us. She taught us how to be women of God. Now, if you can touch your grandchildren's lives like that, you've done a powerful thing. It's not about the stuff. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. Next question is, what tool do you suggest in your fly shop to give my mother for Mother's Day? I don't want to upset if I give her, I don't want her upset if I give her a cleaning to, tool, but your tools are fun. I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a fun tool. And you're, you're going to love it. But this, is, this could save your mother's life. Get her a multi-wand. And get her the, the handle, the, the extension handle that goes with it right here. Let me get it. It's hung up in my microphone cord. So you get the handle and the wand. And then she can reach high to get rid of those cobwebs and she doesn't have to climb on a ladder. I mean, there's too many people I know who have fallen because they climbed on a a chair or a, a ladder or a stool and they fell off of it. You can stand flat footed and do windows outside. You can do you can do windows with your mop. We've got two packages We've got the, <coughs> sorry y'all, I need some salt in here. We have uh, two packages that the floors galore package has the mop and the broom and two extra mop cloths in it at a great price for Mother's Day. And then you can add the multi wand to that. And that's a great gift. It's 38, around 50 bucks, but I'm, don't hold me to that. 
but that would be a great gift and it would be a gift of safety because the the sweeper the 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 broom that's in the floors galore package it gets up every sliver of glass if a glass is broken when you sweep it and then you take it outside and and clean it off but it will gather up the gra- glass <clears throat> All my comments quit rolling. I got to get them back to the end. (coughs) Well, I don't do well with cinnamon pieces of candy. Okay. That's what I would suggest. Because it's going to help her. And we're running low on feather dusters. We put... We just closed them out pretty much because they can't get the feathers. So I'm giving you a feather duster alternative. And I've been loving using this thing with the handle on it to get into those corners and behind some things that um, the Roomba doesn't get to. When will the carpet sweeper be available for purchase without having to purchase the complete cleaning system? Probably within another month, but I don't hold me to that. That's what I'm thinking. My son is going off to college soon. Any tips for his dorm room? Well, the first thing I want to tell you, it's his dorm room. He can live however he wants to. If he doesn't want to live like a sloven idiot, then he will... I got a story to tell about my nephew, Alexander. He always had a messy room. Patty had to fight her battles. But when he went off to college, his roommate was messier than he was. And he became a neat freak. And it was the weirdest thing ever, watching Alexander be a neat freak. It it was. It was just crazy. So, um, if you've taught him well, and he's got a, a laundry basket and a garbage can, a trash can for his dorm room. And he has some containers to put things in and a calendar to put on his wall. Now, they can't nail things on their walls, but you can get those command hooks and you can hang anything on the walls with command hooks. So get him the tools that he needs to keep his room organized. You might want to get him one of those sweater organizers that he can hang in his closet for storage for his clothes and give him the tools he needs to keep his space in order. And I got another prayer request. Today is the National Day of Prayer. And in uh, 40 minutes, my nephew Ben will be interviewing for a position at um, a halfway house in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is two hours away from me. Two hours away from me. And I'm so excited for him because he has a lot of love to give people. And he has this certification in peer counseling for drug addiction. And he loves helping others. He loves helping others. So please say a prayer that this interview goes well. And that come September, he'll be moving to Knoxville. I'm excited about it. I know it's going to happen. So you can't, with your son, you can't show him how to, you can't force him to clean his dorm room. He's a grown man. He is a grown man. So you may still think of him as a little boy, but you've got to ask permission to help him. You know, you can't just, you can't be manipulative. It doesn't work that way. Now you can tell him I have a control journal for free for people living in dorm rooms. It breaks the room down into zones. It does a lot of things. But if he'll make his bed, if he will... um, Keep his stuff put away as he pulls it out and put his dirty clothes in his hamper. He's going to be good to go. It's going to be good.
Okay, next question. I work third shift. I feel exhausted when I get home and go right to sleep. As well you should. Should I try to attempt my morning routine before going to sleep? I never feel like I have time to swish and swipe. When you work third shift, you have to change the name of your routines. It's no longer a morning routine and a before bed routine. It is a get home from work routine and a go to work routine because everything gets changed around. So after you slept, you're going to feel like you have more energy. And so when you get up, from having been up all night long. My sister Susan works a night shift. She does a lot of studying on her night shift and she goes to bed about seven in the morning and she sleeps till about two in the afternoon. Now people who work this third shift need, they really need their sleep. They need more sleep than than most of us do because it really plays havoc with your system. So please get your sleep and you can figure out your clothes all on your day off. You can lay out your clothes and uh, put them on hangers with a, with a note card with a hole punch through it, hanging over the hanger. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if you want to do seven days. (coughs) And then that way, you have your clothes already picked out. Somebody wants me to see something. I can't find it. I don't know the name of the place that he is interviewing for, but it, it's a, it's a, place in a halfway house is what it is and we've heard some really good things about it and one of the board members works at the prison so uh, I think he got him this interview so we're real excited just pray for for it to be God's will whatever happens it's God's will but this this question writer says I never feel like I have time to swish and swipe Well, swish and swipe is part of, it takes 30 seconds, y'all. Don't get caught up in your perfectionism that you're having to clean the whole bathroom from top to bottom. 30 seconds. 30 seconds to swish and swipe your bathroom. So get it done. When you get up in the morning, it's part of my morning routine. Sometimes I make it part of my before bed routine. Sometimes I do it twice in one day. So it's pick up after yourself, wipe down the mirror, wipe out the sink, and swish the toilet. So change your, the names of your routines from going to bed from getting home to work morning routine is no longer your morning routine it is your going to work routine and then your your evening routine is when you get home from work with it now being warmer months when should i focus on my garage and yard do you have a specific zone for yard work No, I don't have a specific zone for yard work because you need to do something in your yard every day. I go out there and I nip buds, I chop a few weeds with a hoe, or I pull a few weeds with my hand or with my clippers. I like to get the roots. That's where I let my perfectionism go wild. Robert has made me a tool that I can stab down in the ground and cut dandelions off at the root. So... You doing a little bit in your yard every day. Yards need to be mowed every day. So pick a day and stick to it. Uh, Weed eating can happen 15 minutes. It doesn't take a long time to weed eat if you stay with it. And just do a little every day. And 
your mower needs to be cleaned after you finish mowing and put things away. And, thank you for my blouse. I, I was going to wear black today and it was just too pretty outside to wear black. Anyway, so there you have it. Focusing on your garage. Don't spend all day on the garage. Now, yesterday morning, Tammy got up. And she went into her garage. It was cool outside. And she got rid of five contractor bags of trash. Things to give away out of her garage. Things that need to be trashed. Things that need to be given away. And she was having the best time. And she got all this done by 9 o'clock in the morning. She spent about an hour and a half out there. So you see... It doesn't have to take all day to clean out your garage and do yard work. Set your timer and go out there and have some fun. Gardening is fun if you'll do it. I've been plotting and scheming what to put in these two, two strawberry pots I've got. And what I'm going to do, I've got these volunteer ferns that are coming up all in my yard. And I'm going to take my little trial and I'm going to plant them in this pot. And I'm going to have fun doing it, but I can't do it today or tomorrow because it's the darkening of the moon. There's no moon and that's a killing time. So I learned this from my great grandmother, Granny Pickard, about planting by the signs. But first day next week, as the moon starts growing back again, I will have it, have them dug up and planted in the pot one at a time. And they're going to be so pretty this summer. I can't wait to show them to you because... I'm going to fertilize them and make them all pretty. <clears throat> and here's the last question. I feel as the 31 days baby steps may take too long to accomplish my home. It's very overwhelming. I don't really understand. I feel as the 31 baby steps in May take too long. That's your perfectionism. We're only going to do one a day. We're just going to do one a day. It's going to introduce you to the whole system. It's mainly for new people or people who are wanting to jump back on the bandwagon. So don't get hung up in your perfectionism. I use the Farmer's Almanac app too. It sends me little notifications. What was that question? Well, there's some good books about planting by the moons. It's, and oh, there's Scott Adams coming live. Anyway, so the main thing is with me is some people need a jump start. So I'm kind of going through the book. This whole month, we're going to be looking at this book one lesson a day because May has 31 days. And what better month to do it in? Bye. Connection available now. Now it's back. So folks, if you don't have this book yet, find it. It's hot pink. That's why I made it hot pink so you could find it. And then some people need to use crisis cleaning to get started. Now let me explain to you what crisis cleaning is. It's 15 minutes in your kitchen. 15 minutes in your living room, 15 minutes in your main bathroom, and then I want you to rest for 15 minutes. If you need to jump back in again, you can. You really can, but you've got to rest that 15 minutes before you jump back in again. Do you hear me? Do not crash and burn. That's the hardest part about everything. Now, oh my. My little machine is turned off again. Turn it back on. 
And what am I going to play? I think I'm going to play the two-minute cleanup song because it's two minutes. Let me find it. Two-minute cleanup song. Let's get some stuff done today. You'll feel better when you do. Dress to shoes is good. Here we go. Y'all have a good rest of your day. Let's be productive. Remember, it's progress, not perfection. See y'all later.